praise the Lord and welcome to this edition of our series of daily broadcasts which we have tagged the State of the Union. The union that is between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. To return to him, in this case, will be returning to Christ. Returning to God in Christ. Returning to God's perspective in Christ. He says, as we began to see, look at yesterday from Colossians chapter 1, he says, in the sight of God, that is to say, what has God got to say about it? How does God see the matter? What was the intention of God in Christ? He says, tell my people to return to that, Christ. So yesterday, much like two days ago before it, we looked at certain perspectives in Christ. He says in Colossians chapter 1, and we'll be going there shortly, he says in Colossians chapter 1, for example, that Christ is the beginning, he is the firstborn from the dead, and then he is the head of the body called the church. And all this in the sight of God. Now, what we understand or make of these things will determine how we relate and therefore function in Christ. And our function of functioning in Christ will necessarily influence how much God is able to manifest his son in and through us. And that has always been the wish of God anyway, that man be in God's image and likeness. Of course, along with the dominion. And the Bible is clear in Colossians 1.15 and elsewhere, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, that Jesus, the son, is the express image of God, just as much as Adam was. So that in the Son, we see the reality of the Father. This has been God's mind. Now, the Bible tells us that we, that is you and I, the church, the body of Christ, the Christian, the bride of Christ, that we are in him, Christ. We have been brought into him. He says that by baptism, we have been brought into both the death and the resurrection of Christ. So that by baptism into him, we are made into him on the cross, him in resurrection. So that not just that he died for sin, but that in him we died for sin. So in him, the penalty for sin has already been paid. But the Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the whole world to himself. So the penalty for sin has been paid, not only for the believer, but for the whole world in the sight of God. So let us return now to Colossians chapter 1 from 16 all the way to 23 and then we continue from where we stopped yesterday in yesterday's 
broadcast. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether there be things in the earth or things in heaven. And you who were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now had he reconciled in the body of his flesh to death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I'll take that again. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. And then the caveat, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So the intent is to present us holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. All we have to do is continue in the faith grounded and settled. That's all we are required to do. Continue in the faith. Grounded and settled. Now, just for the sake of should I say continuity or completion, how does the Bible say that we are to continue? This is critical because if God is going to present us to himself, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight, and he says if we just continue in the faith, then we must understand how we are to continue. He says, for example, in the very next chapter, Colossians chapter 2, at verse 6 and then 7, he says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so, that is to say, in that manner, walk ye in him. What is it to walk? To walk is not to stand still. To walk is a what? Present, continuous experience. He says, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, that is how you are to continue in him. That is how you are to walk in him. So we have received him. We have come to the beginning. We have received him. But to make progress, to go on to other things, to walk in him, he says, we are to do so as you have received Jesus Christ. Then in verse 7 he says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So we are to continue and be rooted in the faith. How? In the same manner that we receive Jesus. How did we receive Jesus? He says, by grace you are saved through faith. If he just said by grace you are saved, then we will not have to discuss about faith. But he says by grace you are saved through faith. Ephesians 2 and verse 8. By grace you are saved through faith. 
not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So there is no boasting. He says, we are saved by grace through faith. And then how does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. How else is it about faith? He said, those who heard the word and didn't mix it with faith did not enter into the promise. So we are supposed to mix the word that we hear which generates faith by actions of faith. So how do we receive Jesus? By grace through faith. What does that mean? We heard the word of the salvation of God available in Christ. We believed it. We made certain confessions. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. I receive you now into my life. Come and save me. Come and wash me. All that. We made certain confessions and we were declared saved. And then we began to act according to that. We began to act like those who are saved. We began to act. We began to do the word of our salvation. And then we began to expect what was promised in the salvation we had to be made a reality in our circumstance. These are the steps by which we receive Jesus. He says that's how you are to continue in him. So he says that God wants to present us to himself, holy, unblameable, and unreprovable, if we simply stick with the steps, continue in the faith. Continue means don't stop where you started at. And unfortunately, that's where many of us are. Yes, we are born again, but that's all that has happened. We became born again because we had the gospel of salvation in Christ Jesus. And then from that moment, we went right back to operating our lives by ourselves, by our understanding, from the flesh rather than by the spirit. So he says, if we continue in the way we started. If we con so when God says, tell my people to return, go back to how it all started. It started because of a word that was preached in your hearing. That's how it started. That's how God starts everything. He speaks, into it, he speaks it into existence. He begins to talk about it. And then he suddenly brings it to pass. He says that is how we are to continue. So you cannot run the Christian race outside of what God has said. So God says in his word that Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn, and then the head of the church. All three words refer to a beginning point. But we said yesterday, by a principle of scripture, if the beginning be holy, then the rest of the batch will be holy. And if you are joining for the first time, please avail yourself of the recorded version of yesterday's broadcast so you can continue in this series. If Christ is the head, the beginning, the first from the dead, by the principle of the first affects the whole batch. Now that we are in him, we have come into all that is Christ. Holy, unblameable, unreprovable. The caveat being, we are to stay that way, continuing and being grounded in the faith. You cannot stand still. You must continue to access the word of God, search out the word of God, and then live according to the demands of the word that you receive part time. Now we must go on to that which we have to do today. Yesterday we did say that there were two points we needed to thrash out. We managed to thrash out the business of Christ being the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and therefore the head. Today, we look or, or we, we, we build upon that of yesterday in saying, haven't understood about the beginning or if you like the first fruit the first born from the dead which is jesus 
and the relationship between the first and the rest. Let us therefore understand that whatever is true of the first or the beginning necessarily is true of the rest. We established Jesus as the beginning, the first fruit from the dead, and then the head of the church. We established that yesterday. We established the principle of how the first, the root affecting the entire tree, or how the first batch affects the whole lump. We established that principle yesterday. Now, if that principle is true, then whatever Jesus is, we have become. Whatever Jesus is, we have become. But for that to be demonstrated or manifest or expressed in and through us, the Bible tells us that we must remain. We must hold on to. We must remain steadfast. We must continue in the faith. We must continue in the faith. Now, let us see exactly what Colossians chapter 2 says about this business of continuing. He says, let me read it from perhaps verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 from Colossians chapter 2 from verse number 10 he says and you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power he says we are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power Therefore, in and through Christ, we become what Christ is, the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. In Christ, that which previously held us from a relationship with God has been done away with. He says, buried with him in baptism, wherein, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God, who also is manifest. Who had raised him from the dead. Verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him having forgiven you all your trespasses. If the sins or trespasses are forgiven, they no longer exist. And if they no longer exist, there's only one thing left. God-likeness, if you like. Righteousness, if you like. But more specifically, Christ-likeness. So he took our sin and then gave us his nature. So in him, we come into his nature. In the image of God. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. So I always have to ask this question Which other devil are you afraid of? Because when Christ triumphed over, triumphed over the devil by his cross, we in him. We are similarly triumphing over principalities and powers. The moment you are baptized into Christ, all that is true about Christ on his cross and the resurrection become true of us. And may I add, the person who went to the cross is the same person who came out from the wilderness after being tempted. So if that person who returned in the power of the spirit, according to the scriptures, is the one who 
with the help of the same spirit, went to the cross, and we come to him on the cross, we come into all that he is, including the fact that he returned from the wilderness in the power of the spirit. In the help of the spirit. This is what we have come into in Christ. If he is the head and we are the body, then everything which pertains to the head becomes available to us. We become. So in him, we are made one with him into one body. Or are we going to say that the DNA from blood in my head is different from the DNA from blood from my foot or from blood from my hands or from blood from my spleen or my bone marrow? Of course we know that it is the same blood. And if the Bible says that the life of the animal is in the blood, then we know that if we are now by the same blood, the blood of Jesus, with Jesus, then we are of the same life. So the life that was in him that did all those things is the life that is now in us, ready once again to do all those things known of him. So that in us, or rather, so that in Christ, we simply become a continuation of what is recorded of him. It's the same life. It's the same blood. It's the same spirit. It's the same word of God. In him, this was what was established. When we came to him, we were plugged into, I said yesterday, we were, we were made into that which he is. It says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ, and we are now in Christ. Hello? Do you get it? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 12, it says, We were given the Holy Spirit so that we may know what has been freely given to us. If the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ and we are now in Christ, all that is left is by the Spirit, search out the wisdom and the knowledge. And then he continues in, in Colossians chapter 2. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them, openly triumphing over them in it. Then he says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or the new moon of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but unto the body, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of a reward in voluntary humility, worshiping of angels, intruding into these things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And here, now is where we're, here's where we're going, verse 19. And not holding onto the head from which all the body by joints and bands and having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. And holding onto the head, holding onto means continuing in Him. Holding on to the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered. So the nourishment comes from the head. But in human terms, in worldly understanding, nourishment comes from what you eat. I always hate it when I hear people say you are what you eat. I'm not. I am what God has made me into by Christ Jesus. Full stop. If you want to adjust that, I am the word of God that has been ministered to me. The word of God is transforming me into what it is, or what it says of itself, and therefore of me. But don't switch me to worldly understanding that I am what I eat. How can I be what I eat? How can I be what I eat? I eat yam. I eat bread. How can I be yam? Or bread? Am 
man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You see, we generally accept these things because they make sense, naturally. Yes, they do. You are what you eat, by that they are saying, eat right. What I eat does not determine who I am. I am what I am by Christ Jesus. He says, I'm not holding on to the head. So by making those declarations, I'm holding on to the head. I am what I am by the head. By what the head is ministering to me in nourishment. I am what I am by reason of Christ. And it says, wherefore, verse 20, wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances? But yes, we are. We are subject to ordinances. We are afraid of ordinances. Do this, don't do that. If you do like this, you do like that. No! My expectations and results are based upon Christ. They are based upon what the word of God says. He says, if you continue in the faith, being grounded therein. And to do that, we must continue in the word. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? And then he said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. Representations of me. Representatives of me. The focus is Christ in you. So let us understand when God says, tell my people to return to me, among other things, he is really saying, return to the dimension of myself, which I expressed and manifest in Christ. Return to the dimension of life and living, which I demonstrated in Christ. He is saying, return to Christ. When we return to Christ, and we begin to hold on to the head, which is Christ, or by the principle we earlier mentioned, we begin to focus on the first and the beginning, then that with the first and the beginning is, begins to overflow, bubble into our circumstance. Therefore, if we fail to continue in him, staying fixed and fixated on him, having our life and relevance in and by him, we will lose our connection with him and so lose the manifestation of what scripture says that he is in us. You take your hands and your eyes away from Jesus, whatever manifestation or demonstration of Christ that was possible, potentially possible in you is lost. But if we continue in him, holding on to the head, fixed on him, now every possibility that the life of the animal is in the blood gets opportunity to be manifest in us. Being that the life or the blood that is in Jesus is the very same blood that is now in us. Otherwise, why did he offer us his blood? When he said, this is the cup of my blood that was shed for your sins. Take it and drink it. Then in another place he said, if you don't drink my blood, you have no part in me. What is the blood there representing? The life. If you don't continue in me, you have no part. So he says, tell my people to return to this. Tell my 
people to return to this. Praise the Lord. Now tomorrow we will come to the concluding part of this series on Colossians chapter 1. We begin to look at what is available in Christ. What has been, what have we been made into? I'll give you a teaser. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6, it says, But Christ, as the Son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold on to, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope, firm unto the end. So we are his house. We are his dwelling. How? Because of Christ. Now imagine moving about and you are carrying God up and down. You are carrying God all over the place. The sheer or the mere consciousness of the fact can change your experience all by itself. But we'll do this tomorrow. Stay with us. We will be back to finish this series same time tomorrow when we begin to look at what has been made available by the reason of Christ. For or to which God is saying, tell my people to return to me. God bless you.